welcome to Lunch with a Veteran. I have uh, Jim Harden with me today, who I've known for probably a long time. I have to tell you how old I was for, for my entire life, probably, since I was a very young child. Um, Jim is a World War II fighter pilot and was a fighter pilot in the Korean War. And we're going to have some soup and sandwich from the Shelby Cafe and, and talk a little bit about military service and, 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 and other things. So thank you for joining me today, by the way. And, and uh, feel free to, to eat while we're doing this. I don't, I don't know if you can do that or not. I, I can. I, I'm not. I'm not bashful. My mom taught me manners. I don't know how much I learned. But, uh, but yeah, we grew up, uh, lived right in front of Jim. Well, up the hill anyway. Yeah. You used to cut grass up to your, your yard in that ditch on that side there all the time, that back lot. You know? so, uh, we've had to cut part of that grass. Oh, have you now? Uh, at the vacant lot between mm -hmm. where we live and where you live. Mm -hmm. face, Which is just the, a kind of a big hill. Room. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're cutting part of it now. Are you? Yeah. So what, why did you go in the military? Are, are you originally from Cleveland County, by the way? I was born in Grover. Born in Grover. Yeah. Okay. Born in Grover. Okay. Raised there. And uh, as a kid, I plowed and Tended to hogs and cows and everything like that. All the kind of. My dad was a rural mail carrier. Okay. And uh, he had all kinds of fowl, ducks, geese, uh, 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 all kinds of fowl. I can't call mm -hmm. them all, but uh, anyway. Uh, took care of all of us, and I, I'm glad that I did grow up in the country out there and had all that stuff mm -hmm. to take care of and enjoy. I didn't really enjoy it then, plowing and you know, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But what did, it, what did that do for you? How did that help you? you know? Responsibility? Made you responsible, you think? Some, I guess, but uh, I, since I was, uh, my dad had a started carrying mail with a uh, horse and buggy. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I recall is I was sitting in the open uh, car that he bought and started carrying mail. As soon as he could, he got a car mm -hmm. and started. And I remember seeing an auto gyro come over head when I was just a little thing sitting in that seat. And I- What's an auto gyro? It a, has a... Is that a helicopter? Kind of like one, except it, it's pulled by a prop in front. It has a prop in the front and has the rotor it's on like top. Like a plane and a helicopter? Lift. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you don't see them around anymore, but okay. they're long gone. But that's when I st realized that I, I wanted to fly. And when the war came along, I was... Uh, uh, at Morris Hill College, mm -hmm. and I remember where I was on D-Day. I was sitting in the dormitory. It was a, a brown dormitory. Right. At, at lunchtime, and the, on the radio, they came over with uh, news that Hawaii had been uh, attacked. You know, that just happened yesterday. And uh, like seventy-five years ago, yesterday. Yeah. So I, I remember where I was then, and uh, so uh, the school, Mars Hill started a program, a civilian pilot training. Uh, so you were in college? Training college at the time? Yeah, at Mars Hill. Okay. In the second year, and uh, Uh, the, they were conducting that program over at uh, Asheville-Hendersonville Airport, it was back then, but it's 
no longer an Air Force. Okay. And uh, I don't know if I'd want to learn to fly in the mountains. Oh, yeah. Well, they didn't bother me. We were flying Cubs. Mm -hmm. You don't go very far or very fast. And uh, I enjoyed that program. And one of the requirements was when you took that program, you had to, when you completed it, you had to sign up for the Army, Navy, or Marine Corps. Right. And uh, when, I, when I finished, uh, I had a friend that wanted me to go with the, to the Navy with him. And I said, listen, I have enough trouble finding the airfield if it's where I left it when I took off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, he said, okay, let's go to the Marine Corps. I said, no, I'm going to the Army Air Corps. Right. Yeah, because the Navy will move the will move the uh, the airport. Yeah, <laughs> they'll, it, they'll move it, the airport. It moves all the time after you're gone. Yeah. So anyway, uh, so I went to the Army Air Corps, signed up, <clears throat> went and took my physical in Asheville, and uh, when I finished, uh, left Mars Hill, mm -hmm. uh, I went home and I waited for them to call me to go into the uh, cadet. Aviation Cadet Program mm -hmm. in San Antonio. Right. So I waited until uh, May at home. And I got a telegram from uh, the, the Army Air Corps telling me to, to uh, travel to San Antonio to go to Kelly Field into the Cadet Program. And that's when I started going. I went through, uh, took another, a flight physical there, which was more strenuous than the, the first one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe they called them a 6-2 or something mm -hmm. program, uh, examination. And finished uh, military training there at Kelly Field. And when I finished, there must have been I don't know how many cadets there at that time mm -hmm. uh, the, going through the flying school. Did you have to go to like a boot spaces. camp or something? Or yeah, it was a boot camp. We did uh, running and... But you had to be an officer, right? You were an officer. No, I was a, I was a private when I was there at Kelly Field mm -hmm. and we uh, were appointed as aviation cadets, which was the same rank and pay as a staff sergeant, mm -hmm. but we were aviation cadets, mm -hmm. and uh, when I finished, I, we had, uh, I forget how many there at one time, I mean, you wouldn't believe the number, and my mind is not as clear on that now as it used to be, but they sent uh, a group of us over to Randolph Field, which is on the other side, of, on the north side of uh, San Antonio, to go through uh, a special program that uh, Hap Arnold was the head of the Army Air Corps at that mm -hmm. point. And he started this program of, normally there was, uh, you went through pre-flight, which was the ground part of it. Mm -hmm. Then you went to uh, primary flying training, then you went to basic flying training, then you went to advanced flying training. That was the program they had to complete pilot training. And uh, the program that uh, Hap Arnold started was uh, you skipped primary mm -hmm. and went directly to basic pilot training. So uh, they sent. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. Well, we skipped your skipped your. Primary. We only had one one uh, cadet killed while we were in training. Over okay, there. that's good. And uh, that was the night flight when he collided with a, with another cadet. Another cadet. And he was killed. Uh, and I graduated from pilot training. Uh, there, it, we we did get some 
just a few hours in primary flames, which was the uh, PT-19. That I didn't get but about three or four rides in that. The rest of it was in uh, BT-13s, which was built by, uh, who built that thing? I forgot. Anyway, I flew BT-13s a little time in BT-14s. Uh, and as I got close to the end of the, my training there, they brought in some AT-60s. Mm -hmm. And I got probably 10 to 15 hours in AT-60s. And I graduated December the 13th, 1942, and was commissioned on that day as second lieutenant. I was 19 years old, so. <laughs> and you were commissioned as an officer at 19? Commissioned as second lieutenant, yeah. And uh, when I, they shipped all of us trainees, all of us new lieutenant pilots mm -hmm. out to various assignments. And I was assigned to Lake Charles, Louisiana uh, as a flying instructor. Mm -hmm. We uh, needed, uh, the Army Air Corps needed a lot of pilots at that time, and that's why they had these rush up programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were 10 of us that went to uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. Uh, I was there from until about December or January of 1943. Three, and they opened up a new base at uh, Victoria, Texas. Mm -hmm. They just built it and opened it up, and I was transferred there. The whole uh, training unit was transferred there. Um, there was also another. This was an advanced flying school. We flew AT-6s. There was also an advanced flying school on the other side of Victoria, Texas, called Foster Field. They also flew AT-6s. <clears throat> and uh, we'd get, we were assigned uh, about, as I remember, five trainees, each instructor. So we would carry them all the way through their training when I first got there, uh, you were taken through all phases of that training, which included the formation, flying, um, um, gunnery training. The T-6 had one gun in the in the nose. It fired through the propeller. And uh, we you say it fired through the propeller. What do you mean? Do what? What do you mean it fired through the propeller? The gun was behind. The propeller up near the cockpit, and it fired through the prop, so it had to be. That's the way they did in World War Two, uh, or one. World War Two, or yeah. after that. It, it had to be timed just right so it wouldn't hit the prop. So that is nuts to me. <laughs> Why did they do that? <laughs> they and later it, later got a, got around that. So, but they had to have some kind of mechanism. Yeah. They did. That knew when the prop was in front of the gun, yeah. it couldn't fire, and then it right. was freed up to fire. That's right. But later they got away from that. I mean, that's just, you know, what, I mean, put the gun in, in the wings. Oops. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Let's put them somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I was there until. So is that what, that, that's what you taught them, is how to not shoot their own propellers on? <laughs> <laughs> No, no. We, we hope that the armament people had, had all that fixed. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> hope so. We didn't worry about that. Mm -hmm. but we'd go down to Matagora Island, which was just off the Texas coast uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, for our training. So we'd take our students down there and take them through gunnery training. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed there and was an instructor, and, and then they started uh, a special 
uh, training unit there at uh, Alof Army Airfield was the field where I was mm -hmm. assigned there. Right. And they started uh, a, a section that just instructed instrument tra uh, training, mm -hmm. instrument flight. And I went to school in Bryan, Texas, uh, to an instrument instructor school, and I was assigned to that unit. I was there until, uh, uh, I guess it was about May of 1944, and they took some instructors from there and sent them out to uh, go to combat. So I went to uh, Tallahassee, Florida, and was farmed out from there to some base down in the lower part of Georgia. And uh, while I was at ALO, we got some P-40s in, and uh, I managed to get a few flights in P-40s, mm -hmm. which I, want, I wanted to fly fighters. Right. And uh, after that, I was when I went to, uh, they shipped me down to uh, that place in Georgia, and uh, they had P-47s. Mm -hmm. And I got, I, I took one look at that thing. Is that the Mustang? Bit, is that the no, Mustang? No, no. That was the, the P-51. P-51. P-51 Mustang. Mustang. Okay. The P-47, I, when I learned I was gonna fly that thing, I, the first, when I first walked up to that airplane, that was the biggest thing I ever saw for mm -hmm. a fighter. Right. But anyway, uh, so it was a big plane? It a lot bigger than the P-51. Okay. And it had a radial engine, uh, which meant the engine had the cylinders around mm -hmm. it. And uh, so then after I finished that school, they shipped me out to... Uh, Why would you want a big fighter? What's better or worse about it? A well, bigger or smaller fighter at that time. A prop fighter. If you fly bombers, you fly straight and level and all that. Yeah, so it can be as big and as I like to do air acrobatics and, mm -hmm. and fly upside down Tricks however you want to do it. Yeah. That you could do in fighters. Mm -hmm. um, you could probably do it in a bomber too. It just wouldn't work out so well. It wouldn't work out too well. <laughs> but uh, it's well, more maneuverable the smaller the plane, right? Well, yeah, they had small trainers, which you, you T6, you could do anything in it to mm -hmm. spins, um, rolls, and... Could you do that in a P-47? Oh, yeah. It was just probably more powerful. It probably had a big... It had a 2,000 horsepower engine. So it was a bigger engine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow. So anyway, I was shipped out to uh, New Jersey to go overseas, and we left on a ship from uh, some harbor up there, uh, across from New York City. I rode a ship over there with a whole lot of pilots, and they had others besides pilots on that ship. And we landed, and um, it took us about 10 days to get over there because they took various routes Mm -hmm. on account of submarines, and we were in a convoy. We landed in Blackpool, England, and uh, I went from there to uh, a unit that was an overseas training unit, or, which gave us some combat training before we went into a combat unit, and, and that was at Atchum, England, where I went. Uh, I was there flying P-47s also, and I was there on D-Day uh, in training. In briefing, uh, in the briefing room that morning, uh, the briefer said, whatever you do, do not go near the English coast today. I had an instructor who had been in combat over there. 
and uh, so there was a flight of he had a flight of four he and uh, three students and we took off and the minute he got we got the wheels up in the wheel well he headed straight for the English Channel right we were up probably 5,000 feet or maybe three and I never saw so many airplanes in my life. The sky was covered with airplanes. Just, we, we were above most of them. Why? What did you know? And uh, when we got near the coast, we didn't go over the English Channel, but we could see the ships in the English Channel. It looked from where we were, like you could step from one ship to the other. There were so many of them. Mm -hmm. So that was my experience there. And as we completed our training, they uh, asked, at, were asking us if we had a special unit we wanted to go to. And uh, I'd always wanted to fly the P-51. I told them I wanted to go to a P-51 unit. Mm -hmm. At that time over there, they had the Eighth Air Force flying out of England. Also, the Ninth Air Force was flying out of England. And uh, the Ninth Air Force had uh, two P-51 units. Mm -hmm. And they shipped me to the 363rd Fighter Group, the 380th Fighter Squadron. And we, they were in England at that time. <clears throat> uh, about a month. Where in England, did you say? Where in England? I don't remember. It was somewhere between London and uh, France. My uh, my grandfather, J. C. Horn, Papa J. He uh, he was in the army. He was infantry though. Yeah. And they shipped him to. He said it was Mammoth, England. Somebody. What? Mammoth, England. I'm not Which sure. is like a southern southern tip. I'm um, not sure. It's a, he said it's kind of like a resort area, like, yeah. like Miami, Florida, or something. And uh, and then from there to Lahar, France. Yeah. And then into the Battle of the Well, uh, I was. They had the buzz bomb then, which they called the B one. You know, buzz bomb. B one rockets. It wasn't a rocket. No. It had a pulse jet engine in it. Pulse jet engine. Okay. Yeah. It had a okay. pulse jet engine in it. In the field I was at, uh, we were, they had three routes of those buzz bombs were taken going toward London. Mm -hmm. We were on the middle, oh, we were under the middle route. Mm -hmm. So we would, uh, <laughs> we would hold our breath when the buzz bombs came over uh, until they got past us and then we cheered on the, the anti-aircraft gunners because we didn't want one of them landing on top of us there. No doubt. But anyway, a month after I joined that unit, uh, we moved to Cherbourg, France. That was the first base I was at and it's, I flew my first combat from Cherbourg in a P-51. Uh, and, uh, let's see, we moved one time after that to, uh, we were supporting the 9th Air Force, which was, the 9th was supporting the uh, ground forces, ground forces, and uh, so we didn't, do many escort missions. The only escort missions I flew was escorting uh, twin engine bombers like the B-25, uh, the B-26, the old Martin B-26. They later had other uh, twin engine bombers called the A-26, which after the B-26 was retired, the A-26s became B-26s. But they, those are the only bombers that I escorted or took part in escorting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I flew 20, 
29 combat missions with uh, the 363rd Fighter Group. It was the 380th Fighter Squadron. Uh, at that point, they uh, changed the fighter group to a reconnaissance group. They, they mounted cameras in them to take pictures over on the German side of the mm -hmm. line. So they shipped us out again. So I went back to another group. I went to the 36th fighter group, which was flying P-47s. <coughs> So I went back to P-47. And so you, you knew the P-47 really well? Well, for what we were doing, the P-47 was, was better suited because uh, they could take more punishment than the, than the P-51. The P-51 had an air-cooled engine, mm -hmm. a liquid-cooled engine. Liquid-cooled. And yours was air-cooled. <clears throat> and the, the P-47 had an air-cooled engine. Because it had those array of pistons yeah around with the, them like that with the heat sinks. they were air cooled and the heat sinks were on the outside of the yeah. piston cases yeah so anyway uh, first the heat the unit i joined was a three uh, 36 fighter group and i was assigned to the 58th fighter squadron and we all of our mission the most of our missions were supporting the army and uh, part of that time we were supporting Patton, General Patton's unit, mm -hmm. and we were dive bombing and strafing, and uh, some of our bombs were uh, fire bombs. Mm -hmm. What were they? I forgot what they call them now. But anyway, I flew. Uh, 61 missions with the uh, 36 fighter group and at the, the, I was at uh, Castle Germany at an air base at Castle Germany when the war ended there in, in the Europe and I was stayed there until I could get transportation home which was uh, about a month later I went to, uh, they flew me back to Paris where I caught a C-47 back. And uh, we landed in Iceland and we landed in Greenland and uh, uh, ended up in uh, somewhere up in New England. And I was uh, separated there. Uh, put on inactive duty at that point. Sure. Went in the reserve. <laughs> and uh, you came back for the Korean War, though, didn't you? Oh yeah, I was out. I was inactive for two years. And uh, then when the no, I I can't got in uh, before the Korean War. I came back after two years on active duty. Right. Uh, and I went to the uh, 363rd Fighter Group at Roswell, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And that was strange because uh, we were... The Rosland? The Rosland? Huh? Rosland or Ros yeah, Roslyn? Yeah, Roslyn, okay. uh, New Mexico. And uh, that was the home of the... Uh, a B-29 group wing, B-29 wing, and we were assigned to the bomber unit. And uh, <laughs> we stayed there until I was there about two years. And then we were transferred, the whole fighter Group was transferred to Otis Field, which is it in Massachusetts, at uh, Falmouth, Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and then from there, 
I went to uh, school down in uh, Tallahassee. No, it wasn't. Panama City. Florida. Panama City, sure. Uh, through uh, aircraft control and warning school mm -hmm. and became a. Uh, well, that's where the Navy trains its pilots now. They do. It's Panama City. Yeah. Well, anyway, I went there and uh, became an aircraft controller. And when I, that was a 10 week school. After I completed that, I was assigned to uh, Orlando, Florida. They had Orlando Air Base at that time. Oh, wow. And I was assigned, assigned there, and uh, but we didn't even have a radar there. <laughs> so not long after that, I was transferred to uh, Atlantic Highlands, New Jersey, which, no, excuse me, a lot of moving around. Excuse me, I was assigned to uh, the National Airport mm -hmm. uh, as a GCI controller, and we would pick up aircraft coming in from, from overseas, and uh, if we couldn't identify them, we would scramble interceptors to uh, identify them. They'd go up and get the tail number type aircraft. We only intercepted, intercepted them if they were uh, not on the right time or on the right course. We would, if they were not where they were supposed to be, we intercepted them to identify them. Otherwise, we didn't intercept them. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there up on the Twin Lights is was up on a hill overlooking the ocean there, mm -hmm. uh, near Highlands, New Jersey. Um, I was there until the Korean War started. Mm -hmm. In what, 51? Um, I don't remember. 51. Exactly. 51. Well, anyway. 51 or 55. Then I, uh, they came out with a Order that anybody who had been in flying fighters before they became a, a GCI controller could ask, request to be returned to fighters, which I did. Mm -hmm. I was off of flying status for about three months, and then you weren't married yet. <laughs> Where you weren't married, ma married yet? I was married when I <laughs> a year after I graduated from flying school. Oh, so you were already married then? I was married, yeah. So in, and you have a son, Bill. I had an older son, Jim. Jim and Bill. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jim was born in 1943. And he was born... Uh, he was born in... Uh, while I was on a train going to the port from Florida. He was born here in Gastonia, in the Gastonia okay. Hospital. So I, I got married in uh, 1943. He was born in 1944, mm -hmm. excuse me. I got married in 1943 mm -hmm. in Victoria, Texas. Okay. And I was married the whole time from that to on. Um, Bill was born. In New Jersey. Okay. That uh, explains it. Uh, I said that explains it. Yeah, okay. Bill, no, I know Bill. I know Bill. Yeah, Bill was born in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And uh, a funny story about that. When we were stationed in Germany, I had my family with me. And uh, he was playing with some of the other the little boys in the area there in uh, Germany. And the little boys got curious, you know, and they were telling about where where they were born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Bill told, told these little kids he was born in New Jersey and they beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> That's not good. Bill's a pretty tough guy now, would you say? <laughs> Maybe that made him tough. But they beat him up and, <laughs> and he came, Betty went out to get him and he was crawling up the stairs and he said, Mama, don't tell anybody I'm a Yankee. <laughs> 
like, oh my God. <laughs> so oh, we funny. always had a big joke about that. But anyway, uh, back to work. I'm sure he'll get a big kick out of watching this. <laughs> we go to... Uh, oh, he'll see this. <laughs> he'll see this. He might be watching it right now. Really? This is, this is live, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. It's live out to whoever's watching on oh, social boy. media. Facebook. Anyway, uh, when the Korean War started, I asked to be returned to uh, flying status, and they assigned me back to the 363rd, excuse me, 36th Fighter Group, mm -hmm. which was at Otis Field in Massachusetts. Right. They had three squadrons, and one of their squadrons was uh, stationed in Westover Air Force Base right. in Massachusetts. Uh, so I was transferred to there, and that's where I left from. I left from Westover Field uh, to go to Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, I was up at, up there about maybe close to a year flying F-86s. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so what's they, the F-86? It's a made by North American. It's a swept wing, the first swept wing swept fighter. Did it had. have a hole in the nose? Yes, it did. That's the one with the hole in it. It had a radar uh, nose on it, and the, uh, the hole was in the nose. Was that the intake for That's the jet? That's the intake for the jet engine. It had one engine. Yeah. And the intake was in the nose. Yeah. yeah. And um, so, let's see. That's a cool looking aircraft. Well, it, it... I remember you having a model of that aircraft. Yeah. In your home. It was, uh, it was a, quite a step above... <laughs> the F-80, or the P-80, we call them F-80s, back mm -hmm. when we were in the Army Air Corps, they were P-80s. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, so I was there at uh, Westover about uh, maybe, maybe a year flying the F-86. Uh, we had gotten into the uh, war in Korea and they had one F-86 unit over there, the 4th fourth, fourth Fighter Unit. And uh, they were sending another, forming another fighter unit in Korea, which was the 51st Fighter Group. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went with a group of other F-86 pilots and we they flew our F-80, flew F-86s out to uh, California and loaded them on an aircraft carrier. Uh, and they flew us out at the same time uh, by commercial. Mm -hmm. um, let me say something. Oh, but when I was uh, notified, they called us into a meeting in the pilot's briefing room, and they said, uh, all pilots who have not been uh, to Korea, mm -hmm. go home and pack your bag, and you're leaving t today, I mean immediately. Wow. Yeah. So I had to go home and... That's the military for you. Yeah. So I packed my bag, we took our parachutes and all of our escape kit and all that kind of thing with us. I remember, I remember getting out in San Diego, being stationed in San Diego. Yeah. And, you know, new wife, took her out there. We've got a beautiful apartment out there. Love it. Yeah. And we got to my shop and they told me I was leaving Wednesday. It was like Monday. <laughs> I'm leaving Wednesday on a, on a workup. Yeah. Which was like a month and a half. <laughs> so over the next several months, I was pretty much gone. He just in and out. Yeah. And then went on a six-month cruise. So they don't give you a lot of warning. No. You're theirs. Well, normally they give you more than the, than the day. The, at least they gave me two days. days. Yeah. They gave me two days. Anyway, I, I went home and told uh, where we were living, and I told Betty to get ready, pack their bags for what they could wear. Right. And uh, 
get the kids ready. We were leaving then to go to uh, bring her home. She stayed with her parents in Kings Mountain mm -hmm. while I was gone. So we drove all night long, got back to Kings Mountain. I dropped, they dropped me off. Uh, the next morning she got up and drove me to Charlotte where I caught a uh, commercial airliner and uh, flew me to California. It's a town across from uh, uh, San Francisco. Uh, it's Palo Alto. Anyway, San Francisco. so that's whatever it is, across the way from San Francisco, and uh, I uh, Oakland. Oakland? met, yeah, Oakland. I Oakland. guess it was Oakland. Oakland, yeah. And they had a Navy base there, and there was an uh, escort carrier sitting there, and it was loaded with F-86s. Mm -hmm. So we got on the carrier there and uh, uh, departed about a day later and went on our way to, uh, they took us to Japan, and uh, it took us, I guess, a week to get there. Mm -hmm. And from there... I've ridden an aircraft carrier in Japan. You have? Mm -hmm. so this was an escort carrier, which is yeah. a small carrier. Smaller. Yeah. World War II carrier. Mm -hmm. And uh, we met at Johnson Field, which is there, and uh, a group of pilots. And they were forming the 51st Fighter Group. And uh, Colonel Harrison Thing from Maine was at the officers club. But we were in a group of us officers were there. And some of them knew him because he'd been the commander of uh, the 36, the 36 fighter group at uh, Otis Air Force Base, mm -hmm. and they knew him. And so we went up to talk to Colonel Thing and asked him if he would request us. So we went to the four fighter group. I was lucky to go with them. And sure. Some of them went to the 51st fighter group. Mm -hmm. uh, and Colonel Thing was our commander while I was there at Kempo. And I was at Kempo the whole time I was in Korea. I was there for a year. And I flew 100 combat missions. Right. And they're in F-86s. So. A lot of combat missions. Well, I I didn't get in I didn't get into a fight except one because we, we were uh, our opposites were uh, MiG 15s uh, built in uh, Russia, right? And they were had a couple of airfields right there on the border of China on the Yalu River. The North Koreans had a base on the south side of the Yellow River. But they stayed, up, kept their planes over on the north side of the river because we weren't attacking anything over in Because you weren't going into China. We weren't going into China. We weren't supposed to go into China. Sure, we weren't supposed to. Okay. But anyway, uh, most of our missions were uh, flying top cover for the F-84s and the uh, F-80s and the naval uh, aircraft that were bombing mm -hmm. and strafing the troops uh, of the South Korean and Chinese troops over in uh, North Korea. So we were flying top cover for them. Mm -hmm. The MiG, I don't care what anybody tells you, mm -hmm. I was flying F-86As and F-86Es models. Uh, they later got F-86Fs, which was a greatly improved F-86. Mm -hmm. But the ones I was flying, they could not climb as fast as the MiG-15. Uh, it was about the same speed, and it could go faster down at the end of the dive, but uh, we, we couldn't climb as fast as they could, or as high as they went. So. Usually, when we went up there, there'd be a whole 
bunch of MiGs up above us. Right. But they didn't come down to fight. They wouldn't come down to fight. So we, uh, if they didn't come down to fight, we couldn't tangle with them. Right. But uh, those that did come down, uh, we had quite a few pilots that shot down a lot of MiGs. But if they wouldn't come down, it was up to them because we, we couldn't reach them as long as they stayed above us. Right. And I got into one fight when I, my boss, I was uh, in the wing operations and he was the wing operations officer. We would, were flying with the 335th Fighter Squad. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, He was flying my wing. I was leading the flight. Uh, and we're going parallel in the Yalu River on the south side. And uh, he called out uh, bogeys at uh, 10 o'clock low. And I looked down, I was flying about 35,000 feet. I looked down, I didn't, I didn't see any uh, enemy airplanes. And uh, so I, I kept looking, I didn't see anything. And in, in a little bit, he called them out again. I still didn't see them. So I said, you got it, So which meant the flight was turned over to him. We went down in a dive and dove all the way down. He crossed the Yalu River. That's why I didn't see him. I wasn't looking there. Right. And uh, we went down, and the MiGs were taking off in, in trail, two, twos and twos, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, we got down in the middle of that bunch. And uh, the MiGs, we couldn't catch the MiGs. We were out of range, and my uh, leader, he was shooting at, at a MiG, but he was out of range. I was flying his wing, clearing our tail. Mm -hmm. And we had two MiGs on our, I had two behind me and he had two behind him. And they kept closing, getting closer and closer. We were at full throttle as it was, trying to catch the MiGs in front of us. And I called him out to him and, and he said, Roger. So he just kept going, shooting. And, uh, Finally, when they got close enough behind me that I expected them to open fire on me and his on him, I called him and I said, I'm breaking, breaking to the right, which means I was going to make a sharp sure. turn. And I broke and uh, I headed toward the, toward the ocean out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't see him anymore, my leader. And I went right across Anton, at about traffic pattern altitude, full, full bore. Yeah. And when the MiGs got close enough to me that I saw, thought I was going to get, they were going to open fire on me, sure. I'd make a break and do a 360 degree turn. And I had a G suit on. And I knew those uh, MiG pilots didn't have G-suits. They, they didn't have G-suits? They didn't have G-suits so at had, that time. They didn't pass out by doing that. And, and, uh, so I would uh, turn tight enough that uh, I would just start to gray out and I'd hold that turn. I made a 360 degree turn with them and rolled out and headed it for the, for the ocean again. And uh, I looked back and they, there was only one MiG behind me at that time. Mm -hmm. So I kept going at full throttle toward the uh, water. And when he got close enough to me again, uh, and I knew that he was fixing the fire on me, it would hit me because he was, uh, got that close. He wasn't shooting out of range. Yeah. So he got close enough and I broke with him and I did the same trick on him. I couldn't out climb him because he'd catch up to me. He'd right. catch me anyway, you know, but fa even faster in a climb. So uh, I made a 
360 with him and looked behind me and uh, he was gone. And my fuel was low because I down at low altitude all this time. And the jet burns more fuel at low altitude than it does. The higher you go, the less fuel you burn. More oxygen up and down In a jet. Yeah. So I was low on fuel and uh, I started climbing up when he was gone and I climbed back up to altitude and I worried about my fuel all the way home, but I made it home uh, okay. Good. How'd your wing, how'd your, how'd the other guy? He got home. Like, oh, he, he got on too? Yeah. Sounds yeah. like he was he was just interested in getting killed. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was interested in. I wasn't maybe, interested in getting maybe killed. Fool, maybe foolishly so. Right? I was interested in it too, but I wasn't yeah. wanting to be the one that got killed. So uh, no doubt. Anyway, uh, what the briefing, debriefing, yeah. and that was the end of that. That that's the only time I ever got in a fight over there. Right. I'm sure that was scary. It was. I thought I was. That's why I was heading for the water. I was so sure he was going to get me. Yeah. But I would. I didn't have time to do a bunch of. Act Probably didn't. Action. Didn't want to. Didn't want to uh, bail out or. That's uh, that's the only, China. Only, only way I could figure to get rid of those guys was yeah. in a turn where, when I started graying out, I knew that he would black out. Yeah. And couldn't. If he turned inside of me. So you never know. He might have uh, blacked out and He crashed. could have spun in. He could have done whatever. But yeah. I don't know what happened to him. Very interesting. I wasn't too interested in what happened to him. But that's it's not good that they gave you an underpowered plane, though. But they gave you a G-suit. And they're like, here you go. Here's oh, yeah. We had a G-suit. <laughs> We've been flying with G-suits for years. Yeah. But they didn't have them. And for those of you who don't know what a G-suit is, it's a... Uh, you have a, it has a band around your stomach and around your uh, legs, mm -hmm. and when you pull it, you start pulling enough G's, it inflates and keeps the blood from going down, keeps the blood around your head. Keeps the blood around your head. Around your head, yeah. yeah. So anyway, around your head, so you don't, uh, so it doesn't, you don't black out. So you don't black out, yeah. That's right. But, uh, Keeps you conscious, so you can pull more G's and stay conscious. Oh yeah. Yeah. But, if you don't have one, you black out and crash. Well, or you one, come too if you, you come roll, too. Yeah. You come too if you, you roll back the roll, other way. Roll out, take off the G forces. Yeah. Okay. Very, very interesting story. What, you, what, what you bring with you today? Uh, did you bring some? Uh, I brought some pictures uh, of my travels and everything, but I don't think you were interested to all of them. You don't think I'll be interested in all of them? I don't think so. Let's see. Let me see that. Lieutenant Colonel James M. Harden, United States Air Force, awards and decorations. Distinguished Flying Cross. Air Medal with 13 Oak Leaf Clusters. Air Force Commendation. Presidential Unit Citation with one Oak Leaf Cluster, Air Force Outstanding Unit Award, American Campaign Medal, European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, World War II Victory Medal. Man, that, that's awesome. That's yeah. a big one. Well, Army of Occupation Medal. What's your favorite medal on here? Top one. Distinguished Flying Cross? Yeah. Why don't you get the Distinguished Flying Cross? I got that in World War II, uh, dive bombing a bridge in uh, uh, in Germany, in railroad yards, I doing that, and I got hit by uh, 88 millimeter uh, flak. Uh, it it hit my airplane between the fuselage and the uh, guns on the right wing and knocked part of the wing off. And uh, uh, I, w it, I was in a dive at the time, and I was pulling G-forces, and the aircraft started shudder shuddering, stalling, going down, and uh, uh, 
I had to release some of the back pressure and pull out more gently um, so it would stop uh, stalling. And I uh, finally got it to climb and then uh, I went back up and uh, went home. And when I got home, I flew by the tower to see if, uh, had them look the plane over and see if they could see any other damage. And they couldn't see any, so I came around to land, and I landed a little fast because I'd lost part of my wing. And uh, I landed, and I tried. What I didn't realize was when they hit the flak hit me, it, it uh, flattened the right main landing gear tire, and I couldn't hold it on the runway. Okay. And it went. I, with the brakes, I, uh, I couldn't, I couldn't, or rut, brakes and rudder, I couldn't hold it on the runway. And it went off the right side of the runway and nosed up. I was looking straight down at the ground. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, I don't know this thing's going to flip on over on its back. And it, but it, it twisted a little bit like that on the nose. And then it fell back down on the tail and broke it into half into behind the cockpit. And you were okay. And I'm fine. And you're like, yes. And that's a landing. And the crew chief <laughs> brought the aircraft forms up and for me to fill it out, you know, if there's anything wrong with the plane, <laughs> and take a my flying time on it and so forth. And he's he brought the form one call it the form one to me and to fill out and I put it on the on the wing and I was fine until he handed me a pencil and I started to fill it out and I got to shaking so bad I, I couldn't fill it out. I handed it back to him. I said, I'll get this later. Yeah, I'll get to it later. <laughs> I'm just gonna go, go take a nap. So this what else? National Defense Service Medal, Korean Service Medal, Air Force Longevity Award Ribbon, Armed Forces Reserve Medal, Small Arms Expert Marksmanship Ribbon, ROK Presidential Unit. That's your Republic of Korea. Republic of Korea, Presidential Unit Citation, United Nations Service Medal, and Republic of Korea, Korean War Service Medal. Yeah, that's it. And then you've got tons of <clears throat> pictures. This was taken at the Asheville Hendersonville Airport when I was taking <clears throat> civilian pilot training. And <clears throat> these are other guys that my picture's not in there because I was taking the picture. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, these are guys that took the civilian pilot training program with me. Uh, and this is uh, some more pictures. This is. If you want to see um, <clears throat> the pictures that we're looking at, if you subscribe to our newsletter, it's e-newsletter. It's go to mcelderlaw.com. Mc, like Mike Charlie, elderlaw.com. I'm gonna, I'll edit these pictures in and I'll email it out to everybody within the next 24 hours, okay? Um, I'll put some of these pictures and comments on this post as well. Okay, and this is the Randolph Field where I was. This, what does it look like? It's a tower, it looks like a tower, doesn't it? It looks like a church or something. It's a water tower is what it is. Oh, is it? It's a water tower. <laughs> Guys, the water tower. This guy's. That's while I'm in cadets with some other my friends. This is the cadet barracks. That's. That's you. That's me. <coughs> I mean, you can thumb through there if you want to look at. It. These are buildings that. Uh, uh, this is all Randolph Field stuff right there. That's the. That was an article. It was in. Uh, I think it was in the Cleveland Times uh, Pre when I graduated Cedars from cadets. Okay. This is a AT-6, which I flew. Grover Boy does in. Yeah. <laughs> That's my wife and my sister standing in front of the uh, Conf Confederate. Oh, right here on the court square. Memorial, yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. Betty Harden was my sister, and Betty Falls Harden was my wife. Betty or wife. And she was pregnant, about to give birth. This was taken in April of 44. 
This is in a little field down there. Some people that lived in the same building we lived in. This is over in uh, France. P fifty in, in P fifty ones. People I knew. And that's that's me in the P fifty one. This is our flight surgeon. These are other. This is a whole squadron right there. This is 53rd Fighter Squadron. That's my airplane there, and that's my armorer and the crew chief. That's my crew chief right there. He was awarded the bronze. He was awarded the bronze star because uh, he he kept my airplane in such good shape. It flew 100 missions without an abort because of mechanical failure. Mechanical abort. Got a bronze star for that. I got a Jim, the Tar Heel Terror. Yeah, that was my airplane. That is awesome. Another, that's a great picture. I'm going to get a picture of it. We'll, we'll write this up as an article for the star as well. And we'll have some of these pictures there. This is me standing in front of my airplane there. Operations court. Yeah, yeah, that was a guy that worked in the, in the operations office, and he was thought he was some kind of artist. Pretty good. Yeah, but I didn't quite get there. He has eagles on. on oh, the, gotcha. I okay. made lieutenant colonel. I didn't get to be a colonel. Gotcha. That this is a target in Germany, a power station that we had as a target, but we. They scrubbed that flight. We never attacked it. This is in Louvain, Belgium. With, no, that's in that's in Germany right there. That's it. Castle Germany is where the, those pictures were taken. These are pictures of German airplanes uh, at the end of the war <coughs> that I took. Uh, they landed near our airfield. When the war was over, we had a, they would fly these planes. Their uh, commander told them to fly, to go home, get as close to home as you can go. Mm -hmm. So they flew as close to home as they could go and they landed these planes, got out and- uh, Left the planes? Yeah, left the plane there. These, nice, this cool. is a, these are FW-190s, Fokker Wolf. That is too. This, these are ME 109s, Messerschmitt. Right the there. Germans have some pretty good aircraft. Oh yes, they had good airplanes. They weren't quite up to ours, but they were pretty good. They were good. This is a picture of a P 47 <clears throat> that the Germans recovered and uh, painted and and were flying. Put back to work. They yeah. were flying it, and they would go up and get next next to our bombers. Mm -hmm. and direct their fighters into the bombers. See, the the uh, bombers didn't realize, they knew it was a P-47, but they didn't know it was German. And that's the tale of the P-47. Uh, the British came in and took over this airfield where I took those pictures. See all these wrecked planes? But the, the British took it over and they threw a, a phosphorus grenade in the cockpit of each one. One so they couldn't be flown. This is uh, they were awarding some. Uh, you did a good job uh, photographing all this. I didn't do that. Oh, you didn't? No, I didn't do that. But I didn't you take took a lot of the photographs in here. Yeah. This is me getting the uh, General Sterling awarding me the DFC right there at Castle. My crew chief is in. This was command, my commander, uh, Major Robinson, uh, Ray A. Robinson. He was from uh, Oklahoma, I think. Look at that. That's my wife, Betty, and that Jimmy. That's when after the war ended, and I had just come home. These are Russian yaks parked at uh, Orly Airfield in. Paris after the war ended. 
What a Russian yak! Russian yak nine. A yak fighters. Nine. Yeah. Was that a was that a decent plane? Uh, I don't like know much. That's a friend of mine, and this is my family here. Those are B-29s at Roswell Air Force Base. 509th Bomb Wing. Oh, by the way, uh, you heard of the, the UFO that landed at Roswell, New Mexico? I have. I was at, I was there at the base where this thing supposedly landed. Mm -hmm. Something landed. Mm -hmm. To this day, I don't know what it was. They said it was weather balloon. They went, uh, that's what they said. I don't know what, it could have been. I don't know what it was. No, no. They sent a bunch of people out there, didn't they? They did what? Did they send a bunch of people after it or? Oh gosh, they went out and picked it, whatever it was up and brought it back and they put it in an aircraft hangar where I was stationed and uh, it was top secret. Nobody <clears throat> could go in there, whatever it was. Interesting. I don't know to this day. Those were F-84 pictures. Yeah. That's a, I flew those. Yeah. I started flying those uh, at Roswell. What's that here? This those are tip fuel tanks. tanks. Fuel tanks. Tip tanks. Tip tanks. Is that smart to put the fuel tanks on the tip of the wings? <laughs> I'm just. I'm well, uh, I lost one. Okay. Oh, I didn't lose it either. I didn't lose it. I had one come loose on the end of the wing. Yeah. Uh, I was over Washington, D.C. at the time, and I was flying uh, with a, one of the guys in our outfit. We'd been down to Florida for a weekend, getting some flying time, and uh, we're going back, and uh, his folks lived in Washington, or right at Washington, and he was doing acrobatics. And I was in trail with him, and I was following him. And, and one of the braces that held that tank uh, level on the wing, one of the braces fell off, and the tank fell over like this. I almost lost control of the airplane when it happened. And the T-33 also carries uh, uh, tank. fuel tanks on the wing. That's when I went to the... What this looks like it could get like shut off for you. This guy right here... You see this airplane? Yeah. Uh, this has nothing to do with the military, but he flew into Otis Air Force Base. This is the guy that flew this uh, Beechcraft Bonanza all the way from Honolulu to Teterboro, New Jersey, nonstop. And I got to meet him. This was while I was at Otis Air Force Base. More family pictures? Yeah. That's, that's while I was in Korea. I was writing a letter. Oh, and that's, I, this this was in the Stars and Stripes newspaper over in, over there in the Far East. Uh, I was brief, I was working in group combat operations, mm -hmm. briefing these guys on the survival kit. That's me. That's you? Yeah, that's when I was in Korea. Yes. I just want to say hello to Mr. Hart. Hey, come thank over. you so hey, much Hayden. for coming. I'm still filming this thing. Hi, everybody. We're, we're going through. We're going through. That's Hayden. We're going through uh, just some things that he had brought. I want to take pictures of each one of these things. Okay. You might could help me do that. I bet I could. Because I want to take pictures of each one. I want to post in comments on this okay. post, and I want to uh, to edit it into the uh, the video. Okay. that I'll send out to our e newsletter subscribers. Okay? Fabulous, yes. Thank you. Okay. You're Good to see you. Good to see and, uh, you. Glad you made it. Okay. Okay, thank you. These are F-86s that we had. Uh, this was the early markings that, that was on them. Now, this was a F-86A. This was an F-86A. The windshield was shaped like this in the, in the center. The ladder model models had a flat windshield. The E model had a flat windshield. That was taken in, uh, in it. Uh, That's a weird looking aircraft. I think it's cool though. It was pretty neat. Yeah, it's it, was a, it was a nice aircraft. 
that's a friend of mine. These, this is latter mark, the later markings on the F-86s we had over there. The 450, the, the 50, uh, I forget, I don't know, forget that. There's a ton of history in here. Yeah, this is when the this is when the movies. This is the USO team when they came. Yeah, the USO. That's sure. Betty Hutton. She's standing in the, taking our the people's pictures out there. Mm -hmm. Betty Hutton. She is a trooper because she, she had, star? Yeah, she had pneumonia, mm -hmm. and she came in anyway. But right. put on a show anyway. That's awesome. He was a real so there's commitment. I want to look at the rest of these, and I want to take pictures of the rest of these. When I uh, retired in 1964, mm -hmm. I was stationed at uh, uh, Syracuse, New York. I was the Air Force advisor to the Air National Guard. Mm -hmm. And this is the commander up there. That's a T-33 right there. And that's me in Korea after a mission. Well, Jim, I appreciate you coming by to, to eat lunch. I mean, I ate lunch. You didn't eat any lunch. No. I had to eat. No, I didn't. I can't <laughs> talk and eat. I know. You know I, was just, I was just asking some questions and curious. I mean, I found myself when we were talking, you were taking me through that firefight in Korea or China. Korea. Korea. And it was in, I was in Korea and China. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then and then uh, I mean, you know, I, I think I could picture myself right there with you, you know. It's get your blood to flowing. I appreciate you coming by and everything that you and your family does for this community and for our nation. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. Glad to be with you. Yes, sir. Glad to be with you. Absolutely. And thanks for tuning in for Lunch with a Veteran today. We'll, uh, I think we're going to have your son. Oh, Bill's really? going to come on oh, in the next really? few days. Well, he's probably a bigger hero than I am. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little scared. I don't know what he's going to talk about. <laughs> Bill's a character. Thanks for joining us.